Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be talking about airplanes in Battlefield 1. They are a total blast, a lot of fun to play, but we're going to be discussing about some of the balance issues with them, some of the things I don't particularly like, and also what role do they play in Battlefield 1, especially in Conquest. Now considering that Conquest has had a drastic change, it's really hard to see how much of a role bombers or aircraft are playing considering that getting kills no longer affects ticket bleed. So literally capturing points, holding points, and defending points is the only thing worthwhile in Battlefield and how much can airplanes actually contribute to this? Obviously aircraft really can't directly capture points other than maybe flying by and getting a very small amount of burn time on a flag. So you're forced into the support role where you're trying to kill enemies that might be attacking your teammates or killing airplanes that might be attacking your teammates. And airplanes are very good at killing other airplanes. And unfortunately that seems to be one one of the few things that they're exceptionally good at. You can kill infantry with them and I have killed plenty of infantry with them but infantry respawns so fast and it's kind of a big deal when you get a good bombing run and take out an infantry or two but if you're actually playing on the ground you're getting into firefights all the time you're taking out other infantry you're respawning very quickly it sort of makes the kills that aircraft get towards infantry seem a little bit less worthwhile than kills you might have got while playing on the the ground. In terms of purely pushing towards an objective or defending an objective, they seem to be significantly less effective in that manner. Now were a bomber to go completely uncontested and just bomb the crap out of points, you could probably get a lot of kills to sort of justify your presence in the air. The only problem is that bombers rarely go uncontested and if you're in a fighter, they're kind of a juicy target and easy to go for. And any aircraft that sort of ignores fighter presence or enemy presence that are in the air is not going to last run. You might get one or two bombing runs in before you get taken down even by mediocre pilots. So naturally lots of pilots are forced into aerial dogfights which are a blast. They're really freaking cool to get into these crazy aerial uh, dogfights blasting off wings and parts of other airplanes taking out pilots and gunners. It's really cool and it's really well done. In fact it's some of the most fun aerial combat that I've had uh, in any battlefield yet. The problem though is that when you're in these dogfights and fighting other airplanes, I mean even if you kill the other guy, you're quite literally not contributing to the score of your team. And it's kind of hard to justify the amount of time you spend in the air uh, fighting other aircraft. Despite it being incredibly fun and rewarding you with a decent amount of points for killing vehicles, it just doesn't seem like it's actually affecting the game that much. And I always feel like um, if my team's doing poorly and I'm up in the air in an airplane fighting other airplanes, that I'm not really contributing to the overall team objective. Comparing it to the dynamic of previous Battlefield games where occasionally you would get caught up in long drawn out dogfights, but a lot of the rest of the time you could actually inflict serious damage to ground targets, allowing you to basically aid your infantry much more effectively. And I found that the bombers just in general haven't been as accurate or effective. Now, of course, this is accurate to the time period. You know, biplanes and stuff back then were not great at dealing massive damage to ground targets. They were more of like harassing vehicles and stuff. They weren't going to like stop infantry columns or take out armored columns or anything like that. They were cool, but not like the end all be all aerial power that modern military aircraft are and are represented as such in, say, Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. An attack jet in Battlefield 4 left unchecked will pretty much obliterate all of the enemy team's armor very quickly where a bomber left unchecked in Battlefield 1 is not going to do that much damage. They're a little bit trickier to fly and frankly not that great at taking out armored vehicles. I mean they can be good if you hit direct shots you'll definitely take out tanks but they're just much trickier and much slower to use. So air versus air, planes seem to be very fun to use and cool, but air versus ground, they generally speaking don't seem to be really pulling their weight, if that makes sense. They're cool, they're balanced in a really interesting way against each other, I like it, the flight mechanics are really fun, although they could certainly use a little bit of tweaking here and there. Uh, one area that I think is a little bit ridiculous and that infantry are starting to figure out now is that like just with a basic sniper rifle or normal weapons or even like um, a medic's 
uh, Mondragon DMR style rifle, you can punch holes in enemy aircraft's wings that severely affects their flight trajectory. So you can be at like 98, 96 health, but have a massive hole in your wing that will actually really, really mess up your ability to fly and aim. And infantry have a huge amount of power to deal that kind of damage to aircraft. Um, and as soon as they turn their guns towards them and realize this in the in the grander scheme of things, it's going to get even harder for aircraft to fly accurate flight paths and take out infantry. I think that the modular destruction on planes is very, very cool, but I it might need to be buffed a little bit against some of the small arms fire. In addition to that, the modular destruction adds a huge benefit when engaging in dogfights to the person who fires first or the person who gets on the other player's tail first. A, a, a good direct hit early on will severely uh, inhibit your opponent's maneuverability to the point where they'll never be able to turn quite as sharply as you and get around onto your tail, sort of securing the victory in the first pass, if that makes sense, which is significantly different from the way it's played out in previous Battlefield games, allowing for the pilot being chased to pull off some cool sexy maneuvers and basically out turn and outgun the other pilot. I don't know if this is something that I particularly like right now. It's something that I'll have to get used to. It just means that uh, a really good pilot is going to have to sort of be completely aware of all aircraft around him at all times and make sure that he's never getting shot first and that he's always the one shooting the other guy first. The counter argument to this system is that the damage states do prevent long drawn out firefights or both pilots will sort of have to disengage from each other and sort of self repair. So it keeps the sort of turning in circles around each other endlessly uh, from happening as much because once you start doing a little bit of damage to your opponent you mess up their mobility and then either you win the dogfight or they win the dogfight. No more of this endless circling wars. So that is sort of a nice addition to it. It just also means that a lot of people are going to go down a lot of the time. You're not going to be one of those pilots that's in the air indefinitely. Now when it comes to balancing aircraft against each other, I love the dynamic of the attack plane and the fighter. The fighter's more maneuverable, can kind of pick and choose the engagement, and the attack plane has the benefit of having a tail gunner with a 360 swivel turret. So the gunner can attribute to uh, shooting down airplanes that the attack plane is chasing, or shooting down planes that are on the tail. And so if you have a good attack plane team, you can actually go around and take down a lot more fighters than you might have thought you could. Of course, when the attack plane is not engaging aerial targets, its ground-based weaponry leaves a little bit to be desired. I feel like its primary weapon could maybe do a little bit more splash damage to infantry on the ground, and maybe its bombs could be a little bit more predictable as they seem to kind of bounce around a lot and give a lot of infantry time to sort of run and hide from them. Now, the three-seater bomber aircraft I find to be one of the least engaging craft in the game right now. It certainly has one of the most powerful uh, complements of armor immense available to it. It's got uh, two massive bombs and then a payload of smaller bombs. Uh, so it can do good damage to ground targets provided that you have lined up long enough for a bombing run. It is a very, very slow and sluggish plane. So lining up for bombing runs in this aircraft is very difficult. And I think it could certainly benefit from a little bit more maneuverability perhaps just so it could have uh, more of a chance to get some of those bombing runs lined up last minute as you don't always have a huge amount of time to sort of plan these long elongated bombing runs because the aircraft is so slow it takes a while to get to the edge of the map turn around and come back in addition to that though, it does have two gunners which are supposed to fend off attacking planes pretty well. The problem is that the front gunner has sort of an explosive round uh, that is very fun to use against zeppelins and stuff like that, but it's far less effective to use against fighter craft. It can be used against fighter craft, but it's just not quite as good. And the tail gunner has a much more limited degree of freedom compared to the attack plane. And this makes it very hard for the tail gunner to adequately defend the bomb and I feel like if they gave the tail gunner a complete degree of freedom when it comes to rotating that turret around or a much bigger degree of freedom, it would allow that gunner to really defend against some of the threats that take down bombers all the time. And it would be much more challenging and fun to attack them. Anyway, I'm absolutely loving the aerial combat. It's incredibly fun and I think DICE did a good job of uh, making it fun and making it engaging. It's just when I, I look at it from a game design,
design perspective and a balance perspective, I'm sort of thinking, what am I actually doing to help out my team here? It'd be a thousand times more helpful if I was on the ground, capping points, taking out tanks, and doing something a bit more effective. What do you guys think? That For those of you who have actually gotten into the Battlefield 1 closed alpha, have you been flying a lot? Do you think it's effective? Or do you think it's just a lot of fun but probably doesn't make a big difference? As always, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.